I, you I, waited I, until you had an I'm opportunity to sit in front of a camera one on one with to use an audience of millions of people. Correct. My husband looked like a predator. No, and you, you are not. You shut up. No. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Sami Sampi. Let's talk about the reunion part two. So the ladies are back and Candice and Giselle are going back and forth and I'm not going to lie, I was so happy that Andy intervened when he asked Giselle what did Chris do to make you feel uncomfortable because she kept on saying that he made her feel uncomfortable. So now the question is, did he do something specific or it was just the fact that you both were in the room together at the same time? And Giselle is saying- That you were uncomfortable being in the room alone with him? Yes! That he didn't do anything, emphasis on the do. She just felt that way. That's giving right to Candice that is saying, you're lying, he did not do anything. Why should he apologize for something that he did not do? And Candice is saying, if this was really the case, Giselle could have told her way early, but no, Giselle made the decision to let her know during the show. They could have had that discussion way before but she refused and mia had the nerve to intervene and i'm like mia girl the word of candice no and you, you are not you shut did, up no. like what girl like why do you feel like you need to intervene and even when you intervene you were wrong and giselle even told you you were wrong giselle you got caught you got caught that question andy asked was very pertinent and he asked helped us understand that you were just talking about your feelings but then you felt like Chris was a good person. Like you said a lot of stuff. You were lying. You were really lying about this man. I believe Giselle was not being genuine if one, she told Candice way earlier before the show came in. And two, if she didn't go and talk about Chris's behavior after she said this initially, that's the problem with Giselle. After she said what she said to Kenzie, she said a lot of mean things about Chris. And yeah, Kenzie really got into her ass and I'm not mad at her after like Kenzie did what she needed to do. What did y'all think? Next, they're also talking about Debra's situation. Debra lying her ass about Chris. Debra was not invited to the reunion. I know she's mad about it. I heard that her and her husband been talking shit. But guess what, girl? You're not going to be there. So Ashley had to cover for you because she's the one that brought you in. And when Andy asked Ashley about the situation, Ashley looked dumb as hell and had to say, honestly, I'm surprised because Debra never really lied to me, but she's saying that it's the fault of the producer. And it's because the producer knew that she was going to say it's the fault of the producer, that the producer put in the evidence to show that you were lying. So now Debra is trying to say, yeah, the producer have the footage, but they refuse to show the footage because maybe they don't like me. I think that that's what Debra is trying to imply, but guess what? You're not going to be part of the Real Housewives of Potomac. I think that that's what Debra was trying to do, but I mean, that was a flop and they didn't even invite you, girl. See, you should have been yourself and maybe you would have had a chance. Look at Jacqueline. That's going to come in later, right? She was being an authentic, uh, authentic self and this is why now she's at the reunion next they also talked about eddie smiling a lot and dr wendy doctored them i like to say she doctored them which is she's going to come with a nice speech and explain very clearly why those be are wrong and even andy had to be on her side and say yeah i mean at the end of the day those men cannot do anything which you are for fear of being accused of anything and yes this is because of Giselle and Ashley lying their ass off and willing to bring any lies that they think is going to drama. Yeah. Andy asked the question about Candy's IG live. And honestly, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was wondering why are we talking about Candy's IG live? But then when they went into the discussion and Robin had the nerve to say, Get upset about stuff because it's done on camera, which is not fair. We're all here. When we're filming, everything we do should happen on camera. I was like, girl, the nerve. And the producer were like, From Candace earlier today. I heard she was like tweeting a lot. She's also really angry and disappointed. 
She feels she is being mad at you because you were in during the reunion and talking about yeah you got to show everything you got to talk about everything but your ass was lying you were like omitting information in rubens this is not good for you girl this is not good at all <laughs> then andy was like time to eat and the producer was like hold on hold on hold on like you need to like come up with something andy was tired andy was like listen I got too much going on with these efforts. I need to go and take a break. And it was, I'm ready to go. During their break, we see the husband coming in. Kenzie is super excited to see Chris. Wendy is like giving the gist to her husband, Eddie, about what has been said. She's saying that Mia is trying to bring Eddie's name all the time. And Eddie's like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish they showed Giselle and Rubin backstage because those girls were sharing a room for a reason and I know that a lot of talking was going on but producer made the choice to not show them. A part of me is thinking they know better and probably didn't say much but. Next we have a highlight on Giselle and basically Giselle throwing her daughter with 16. We see Giselle doing whatever she's doing which is not much because she doesn't really have a storyline on her own but what they did is that they talked about the hysterectomy that only came what two episodes or one episode by the end of the show and uh, yeah so now they're highlighting on that and yeah like you can see that she didn't really have nothing going on on her own she talked about the hysterectomy that was really really sad and i'm happy that she is doing well her hysterectomy is a big deal that's the removal of your uterus and she probably had fibroid i'm not sure but yeah it is definitely a big 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 surgery and i'm glad that she's out is doing okay they also ask her about steve and i'm like who cares about steve she has a new boyfriend who is that in that other show i think it's like i even forgot the name whatever and the guy is 36 and apparently she's like what 16 years older than him and i'm like how old is giselle giselle is 52 years old and i must say she looks beautiful young i mean yeah she really inspired me when it comes to that like a body and everything she looks good with the tea and yeah i need to keep up with my workout with eating healthy drinking my tea you know being happy and stuff because one thing that giselle is lacking is the happiness she's not truly really a happy woman but outside of that she is beautiful she got nothing going on she don't got nothing going on on her own i wish she talked a little bit more about the whole hysterectomy thing andy asked her why didn't you share those things with the lady she's like she don't like the lady he's telling her that people really said that she hasn't been sharing much and she only focused about the other people she's trying us to defend herself but really there's nothing to defend and candace is like on her she's like yeah she's not showing nothing she's not talking about nothing and it's true like you don't want to talk about your own personal stuff with the other lady you could have had scenes with like the people you do like and talk about it right but you choose not to because you'd rather be into other people's business i think at some point you just need to be honest about it because you got busted and he asked karen about the war coping everybody else and she said what she said and all i'm going to say is that karen be coping sometime i think she is i feel that karen being a lady of a certain age she needs to sometimes have the inspiration from the other ladies. That's my opinion. I think she does, but at least she does a good job when she's doing it. That's all I got to say about that. What do you think? Do you think that Karen really comes up with those ideas on her own or she's maybe slightly inspired by Wendy, Giselle, Robin, and them? Next, we have a highlight on Wendy. One thing about Wendy is that I respect her a lot. We see Wendy going through some health care, taking care of her family, looking for different ways to diversify her income we've seen her working i think that she is really trying new things and i respect her for that we see her talking to peter thomas trying to set up a restaurant the idea didn't work out but at least she tried and we get to the situation with mia so when andy asked all the questions to mia mia was coming up with bs and i was like child i don't even know if I'm going to be able to like go through this section, I was highly annoyed, y'all. I think that this was the time for Mia to reiterate that she was sorry and leave it at that. But no, Mia swear she's smart and she's not that smart. And I was just so frustrated with her. You know, she tries to change the narrative. I was talking business. 
she wanted to talk about, about threesomes. Try to make herself look like basically Wendy was the one trying to attack her verbally and she lost her cool when that really was not what happened. Did not start attacking her verbally after before she threw the alcohol at her and i'm glad that kenzie's interview well, you took it to a whole you other level when you threw the drink you and then she she responded. are you kidding me and said that is not true what you're saying so yeah mia was full of mm. you can see that dr wendy started to doctor she reminded her that what she did was assault she was being very emotional i think that was genuine out of dr wendy i think our emotions were genuine and Mia was trying to deflect. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to talk about the no. fact you, you I want you to that was deflection. And that was kind of like the same strategy that we've seen Black Grand Dame do in front of Robin when they were back in Mexico. And she was like a shoulder to the wall. Mia tried to do that. The problem with you, Mia, is that you lie so much that people don't even believe you no more. And it showed. Like when you said that, that was supposed to be a haha moment. But it was like such a flop, you know, everybody was like, people shouldn't be allowed to say anything that they want to say. And that was true. Nobody believed you when you thought you were dropping a bomb. Wendy said that you F for lobster. She was like, we were like, yeah, that's accurate. And I was like, yeah, you think that we're going to respect you because you're saying that, but we don't. You just, no, I don't, I don't see it for me, y'all. I don't see it for her behavior. And my fear is that if she stays, she may get worse. I don't, I don't know if Mia really learned. Then Andy asked the question to Robin about why she was basically accusing Wendy of dating Mia. And Robin was coming up with BS, talking about she didn't really want Wendy to fight. But then we see footage of her saying that she did want Wendy to fight, but not in front of the camera. Once again, very frustrating to, to watch, you know, the lack of intelligence, the lack of wisdom, the childishness. It was just very, very difficult for me to watch that scene. I'm not going to lie. A part of me was like, you know what, we'll be in some time. It's better not to say nothing than to just look so dumb in, on camera. Then I asked Ashley, who the situation, the fight happened between Monique and Kenzie. She was on Monique's side, but now, she's saying that she's more on Wendy's side. And here is the thing, right? I think that Ashley, Robin, and Giselle are the same type of people. They will back you up based on if they like you or not. They do not have good morals. I think that Ashley didn't like Candice, and that's why she was on Monique's side. And now she likes Wendy, and that's why she is on Wendy's side. The same exact thing that Giselle is doing, but on the opposite way. They're the same type of people. They do not have good morals. They're not fair. They don't play fair. And you need to be careful of people like that. It was emotional, and I like the fact that she was emotional because I want Mia to be gone. I want Mia to be gone. She's a lot of fun and stuff like that, but if they keep Mia, she's going to not, it, she needs to not go violent anymore, you know, and stop with the lies that don't make no sense because it gets extremely frustrating. Giselle even said, I don't like her. That's why I'm not on her side. And I feel like it was extremely sad. I feel like it was, she's 52 years old, y'all. And she's talking to you about, I don't like her. That's why I don't care. Like Kenzie said, right is right and wrong is wrong. Then at the end, Mia said something about this girl don't know what she wants. We were, she, we were kissing or something. Wendy's response was like, but weren't y'all kissing? Or something, or vagina bump, she don't bumping. She know what she wanted. To do. We'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get oh, into okay. that, child. We all show each other oh. vaginas. It was tequila. Honestly, that made me look at Wendy a little bit sad. I, I'm wondering if, I don't know. I was like, girl. <laughs> a part of me felt like Wendy, Doctor Wendy, is too smart then to go and do that. But she's blaming it on the alcohol. So I guess. Do I think that they kiss? No. Did they show each other vagina? It seems that they did. I think that Dr. Wendy kind of confirmed that. You all show each other uh, vaginas. It was tequila. Let me all know what you think in the comments. Next, they go and talk about colorism. So Andy is telling us that he's been listening to us, right? And he knows that he doesn't have the authority to talk about it, but they did production and him Ask the lady if they want a moderator to come or if they want to talk about it on their own. 
and they choose to talk about it on their own and i was like that is the dumbest decision they could have made those ladies outside of kenzie's and wendy are just not smart enough <laughs> they need a moderator they needed a black moderator and even though I really appreciate the word of Kenzie's. It was not enough. It was not enough. And a part of me felt that this part was rushed, right? I felt like they could have cut the highlight on Giselle and talk a little bit more about that. Let me all know what you think in the comment. I felt like for me, this was the biggest disappointment of this reunion part two. They brushed the colorism thing. And yes, Kenzie did do a good job. I like the fact that she started with the definition of what colorism is. They all agreed to it. She gave her own example. Typical Kenzie does like a little bit spoiled, let's be honest, even though she was correct, right? But she gave her own example, which I felt like would not lend as good, but it is what it is, right? And then Giselle acted like she don't understand nothing. And then she's going to talk about she's small. I like the fact that Ashley accepted and recognized that she had privilege because of her lighter skin um do i think that she did it to be nice and stuff no i don't think i think that she was being honest but i think that actually still has diff difficulties understanding the intricacy of colorism and i'm not going to lie to you all i do too and as a brown skin woman, sometimes it's hard for me to be able to know if what's going on is just that the person don't like me as a person, or is it that it's being done to me specifically because of my chocolate skin? Uh, colorism, even though some people think that it's very obvious, it's not always obvious for some of us. I, for example, did not think that between the ladies themselves, there are some colorism. But for example, when I was watching Basketball Wives at the time, I did feel that there were some colorism coming from Evelyn Lozada with uh, the other girl, OG. I felt like colorism was more evident then. Do I think that it's more evident during Real Housewives of Potomac? Not always. I'm going to be honest. I don't always see it because it's very difficult to put a pinpoint on, but some of us are better at it to do it. I've myself been, you know, watching other people videos on YouTube that talk about colorism and stuff to really be able to understand a little bit more how you can know if what's going on is colorism or not. Uh, yeah, so I feel like they didn't spend enough time on it. I feel like they brushed it off. I didn't feel satiated. I didn't feel like what they needed to do was done. But now we cannot blame Andy, right? Because and he put the blame on the ladies, right? The ladies chose to not have a moderator. And that is the reason why we didn't have that much time spent on it. I don't know what was said, but hey, I don't know. Let me all know in the comments. Next scene, we have Jacqueline coming in ready with a receipt for Mia. I have a highlight on their relationship. And Jacqueline is saying that she is highly disappointed with the way a relationship with Mia ended she said that they have not been talking since the, they, they basically filmed together she's saying that the problem in a relationship with mia is the dynamic she felt that mia looks at her like a peasant and i'm not going to lie based on what i have observed during the show sometimes i feel that mia was kind of looking down on jacqueline a little bit especially whenever they started fighting it was a little bit more obvious then mia did say that jacqueline always been a supportive person to her a supportive friend a supportive sister she's i mean mia really don't have nothing bad to say about jacqueline which to me is just an highlight on how selfish mia is mia don't matter you know she fucked away for lobster and she was able to meet that married man that she fucked on the beach in miami and he divorced his wife for her, married her. That man happened to be a rich man. And Mia basically thinks she made it. And she started looking down on the people that's always been there for her. That's all it is. And that is a personality trait, you know. That's just as she is. She is extremely selfish, you know. Now that she made it to the top, she's looking down on the people that she grew up with and that she was with that didn't maybe make it with her, right? 
And um, it's sad to watch, but I think that's what it is. She has nothing wrong to say about Jacqueline. And, you know, learning that she's been sending text messages to the group, very demeaning and mean text messages to somebody that basically is a sister, her parents raised you with, their, with her and everything. And it's like, wow, girl, like the ungratefulness, you know, the ungratefulness is like, wow, like that was just really, 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 crazy to watch. Jacqueline is saying that her mom hasn't watched it, but like all her family members are pissed on Mia. And what does Mia is going to do? There's nothing she can do. There's nothing she can do. And then at the end, they're both like bringing up the receipt. Family business is all in a shambles. Oh, I know all about it. And I have all those details. Oh, oh she got stop. Box. Pandora's box. You want me to bring it out? You want to start? Oh, okay, let's shit. start. You see, I want to hear about Jacqueline receipt because I know she knows the truth. <laughs> I know she knows the truth about me, about Mia. I'm more interested to know what Jacqueline has than what Mia has. I'm just saying. Did, what did I think about Reunion Part 2? It didn't learn for me. Um, I felt like a lot of topics were brushed. And um, I was disappointed. I felt like they should have cut some part about Giselle. You know, the hysterectomy situation. I'm happy they talked about it, but I don't think it needed the two, three minutes that it was given. I think that producer, sometimes there were certain topics, they would just brush it off, right? They didn't really brush off the situation between Wendy and Mia because that really was the meat of this season, to be honest. But I feel like there's a lot of things that they brushed off, right? And I was kind of disappointed, especially the colorism part. That was the part that I was the most disappointed in. They said that part three is going to be 90 minutes. We'll see, we'll see. I'm excited about it, but we'll see. Those of you that are new, hey, welcome, and I invite you to, you know, please like and subscribe my video as this is really able to help me grow my channel. For those of you that have been supporting me from the beginning, I am so thankful for you all, and I will see you all next week for Rainian Part 3. Bye.